All right, contractors, we are ready tonight. Whew. Welcome to a special edition of Coffee and Conversation with the Contractor's Contractor. We normally do this on Tuesday mornings, 10 a.m., sit back, have a cup of coffee. Uh, and today we make a special, special, special one because this coronavirus, COVD-19, whatever the hell they want to call it, has got the economy and uh, the whole country upset. So grab your favorite drink. Contractor, because badass isn't official job title. Uh, five o'clock even here. No, no, no telling when you're watching this replay, but uh, man, tonight we are going to be sharing with you. I'm going to bring on a guest, hopefully if he shows up, but I'm going to be going over everything that you need to do to grow your business right now. Grow it right now. Man, I'm, I'm not even sitting down right now. I'm so crazy excited. So tag somebody, get some people on here. I want you to join the conversation, ask questions, and uh, we're going to get busy. So uh, let's see here. Oh, 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 wait. <laughs> All right, we're back. All right, say hi. Let me know that you hear me, that the microphone's working. Uh, let me know where you are watching from. Scott, what's up, buddy? Uh, and uh, join the conversation. Tonight, like I said, I'm going to go over about 10, 12, 13 different things that you need to be doing. I'm excited about the coronavirus. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, this is, this is going to end up being really great for a lot of small construction companies and contractors, and it's going to be really bad for a lot of small construction companies and contractors. Which one will you be? I'm telling you right now, man, it's like, I don't want to say I told you so, but I told you so. You should have watched the video that I put out like six months ago. Are you ready for the recession? Uh, see, there comes a time when Mr. Winter will ask you, what did you do all spring and all summer? And now is that time. Mm. So you get every night you go to bed empty, you go to bed tired and you wake up hungry. Every day is a new day. Every day. You got to be ready for the challenges. You got to be ready for the fight. And that's what this is. It's a fight. Make no mistake about it. Uh, but here, here, here's what I want you to know is opportunity follows action opportunity follows action. And right now is the best time for you to tune up your business and do all of the things that I talk about doing in my book for contractors only. You've mastered your trade, now master your business. I want you to stick around to the end of this. We usually go about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Tonight, we'll probably end up going almost an hour if you guys are asking the questions because I got so much that I want to share with you. But You've got to be battle tested. Man, when I'm teaching martial arts, our kids, my little four-year-old kids, my little five-year-old kids, six-year-old kids, I'll put them in the, in the corner. Four years old, man, five years old, and their parents are watching this. I'll put them in the corner, and I'll put two or three kids in front of them, and I'll say, go. And, and you got that little kid, four-year-old, five-year-old, he has to fight his way out of the corner. Boom, taking some hits, blocking some, kicking some. See, I can't sit down and do this tonight. You know, this is, this is, this is, it's too much. But he's got to take a lot of hits. He's got to take a lot of punches. He's got to take a lot of kicks, but he's got to get out of that corner and he's got to get away. He doesn't stay there and fight. He's got to get out of the corner. And he's got to get away. And when the parents first see that, they're like, oh my God, what are you doing to child abuse? Child abuse. But you, he's got to be prepared for what reality is. He's got to be prepared for, the real world. And the real world is just that. The real world's going to try to knock you down every day. This virus, it's different. It's different than normal recessions that we have. But every day, you're almost facing a recession. Every day, you've got to work like tomorrow is your last day. Come on, man. Not just right now. Every day. But when that kid goes to school and someone follows him into the bathroom and starts picking on him, he's used to it. Guy hits him. He looks at him like, that's all you got? <laughs> and the kid's probably punching at him. He's, he's running, looking for the principal. Help me. I accidentally hit this kid. He's, he's upset. But that's what because he, he's been battle tested. So that's what's going to happen to you right now. You're going to be tested. And, and what this does is it separates the contenders from the pretenders. Okay, This is going to separate the contenders 
from the pretenders, man. <laughs> oh, so, uh, man, I don't know, there's a lot of things you're going to have to do to, to prepare yourself for what's happening with this economy, what's happening. And this is different. This is like this virus thing. It's like an unseen enemy that we're fighting that's, that's, that's come to our shores. We've never been attacked. We've never been, you know, you don't come to America and, and start a war, you know, except for the Civil War. And after uh, our independence, no one's had the balls to come over here and attack us. So this is a little different. I think it's blown out of proportion. I'm not going to get into the politics of it uh, because that's not what tonight's about. What tonight is about is helping you get ready and, and to, to grow your business. So there's a lot of things you need to be doing. And like I said, it's right now, it's a time for you to, to tune up your business and do what you should have been doing all along. Man, and stay stay with me because at the end, I'm gonna offer you some stuff for free. I'm gonna offer you some uh, a great deal on some, on some coaching, but it's not the end of the world. What I want you to do is you, when you got to get away from the, the 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 television and the news, the CNN, the MSNBC and stuff, and it makes you think that everybody's that they stay at home. But most construction workers, even with this lockdown, uh, they're still letting the construction guys go out and work because you know you can't leave a homeowner hanging in the balance, an unsafe residence, or uh, leaving them homeless because the job isn't finished. So we're still able to go out and work, at least here in California. That may be changing tomorrow. I don't know. I don't know, but uh, what you want to do, here's, here's number one. Get, I hope you get, get, grab a pen and paper and you're going to write some of this stuff down. The replay, even ask the questions during the replay because I'm, I'm going to come back and, and I'll share this with you. This will be turned in. This will be on my YouTube channel. This will be on the podcast. So you'll always be able to access it and listen to it over and over again. But the first thing you're going to do right now is you're going to start tracking every penny. Every penny that comes in, every penny that goes out, you're just going to track it more so. You should be, I'm telling you, everything that I'm going to tell you to do right now, you should have been doing all along. Except right now, you're being punched in the stomach and you're going to have to do it. Because a lot of companies are going to go out of business. Do you want to be one of them? And the guys on this call, the guys listening on this call, this is the old school, man. The guys watching this video, they're going to take advantage of the ones going out of business. They're not taking advantage of them, it's just... There's going to be when, when this is over with, just like any of the recessions. And I'll tell you, when I got into construction early 80s, we were coming out of the Jimmy Carter era and Reagan was there and, and uh, you know, things just exploded and started booming. And then, you know, the early 90s and then the Rodney King riots. And I've watched just the gas prices, the way I watch my the marketing and stuff. I know when to turn my marketing up. I know when to turn it down. Everything affects everything. And then you got 2001 and what will happen then. And then the real big one, the 2007, 2008, 2009, put a lot of people out of business that shouldn't have been in business. And that's what's going on. That's probably what's going to happen with this. There's so many you know, times have been so good, you know, just like 2004, five and six, you know, selling loans that shouldn't have been sold and buying houses that shouldn't have been bought. But the construction industry was so just busy that everybody was into it thinking they were, you know, construction guys and they're not. So when the, when the shit hit the fan, the first ones to go out of business are the ones that shouldn't have been in business anyway. Drywall guys who don't know shit about drywall were out of business. Guys who were painting that don't know shit about painting were out of business. Floor guys were out of business. What happens is, you know, it, uh, the economy has a way of taking care of itself. The industry has a way of taking care of itself. And so when this is all said and done, when the smoke starts to clear, there's going to be so many opportunities for you. It's unbelievable. You're going to be able to raise your prices. Uh, companies are going to be going belly up. So you're going to be able to hire really good guys to where it used to be. You couldn't hire dudes right now, especially the good ones were working. A lot of those guys are going to be out of business. You got to be ready to snatch them up. Mm, this, I'm telling you, man, the best thing that ever happened to you is going to be the COVID-19 coronavirus woo! <laughs> that's what you're gonna be saying you're gonna be buying a new boat and painting on the side coronavirus <laughs> help me buy this boat i'm telling you that's that's the mindset you've got to have right now i don't want you living in fear and dropping back and and you know hiding in, under the blankets watching netflix right now i want you to understand how great of an opportunity this is for you and the first thing is you've got to track every penny and i got a guy he just showed up so i'm gonna be bringing him on and uh, another old school guy been in the construction 
just as long as I have maybe one or two years less. And I'm a hardwood floor guy. He's a painter and he's doing the same thing I'm doing right now. We're trying to help all these up and coming small contractors and construction companies getting into it. We don't, there's so many guys on the internet right now on Facebook taking advantage of uh, our brothers, the, the contractors. Man, I'm, I love sitting back having a beer with contractors and right now, this ain't coffee and conversation right now. This is Jack Daniels and Coke. So uh, sip up, man. What's your favorite drink? Let me know what your favorite drink is. Leave it in the tab. Leave it in the comments. But I sit around because we go through the same thing. We, we've got, whether we met each other ever before, we've got that instant bond because we we deal with the same type of homeowners. We deal with the same type of employees. And uh, when I bring Jim on, you know, he's going to talk about the Facebook ads and he's got a whole program that teaches you how to run your own Facebook ads so you don't have to pay out thousands of dollars to have someone run them for you. And you're paying these guys thousands of dollars and that's not including what it costs. That's not the, that's not what you're paying Facebook. You're paying this guy to run the Facebook ads and then you're paying Facebook. And so he's, you know, he's going to share that with you. Uh, let's see what we got here. JB says, uh, let's do it. Yes, man. And, uh, the, what? And the internet sucks. Mine or yours, but I'm trying to watch. All right, kid, kid keep watching. I make my own. It's, uh, I make my own. Oh, you got your own drinks. All right, brother. All right. So uh, I'm going to bring him on. But so number one is you got to start tracking every penny. And again, I can't stress this enough. It's everything I'm sharing with you right now is what you should be doing every day. I'm almost glad this happened to a lot of you guys because I'm telling you three years from now, people are going to ask you, How'd you get to be where you're at in a business? And you're going to go, coronavirus. <laughs> Best thing ever happened to me, coronavirus. Uh, but so what I want you to do when we when we get off of this, when you stop watching this video, I don't care if you're watching it a week from now, two weeks from now, is get away from that mentality that the sky is falling, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. I want you to make a list of all the thousands of people, all of the industries that are making so much money right now, the truck drivers, the toilet paper people, the people who make the mask, the pharmaceutical companies, the doctors, the nurses that are doing overtime, the police people that are doing overtime, the fire department, the first responders, all of these guys that are doing so much overtime right now, they're gonna have so much money. Uh, man, I feel so bad, like my wife is a, uh, has been a waitress her, her entire life and all these restaurants that are closing up and stuff, uh, the restaurant, the bartenders, the waitresses and stuff, they're not making them much money, but, and I don't want to sound like a, a, a jerk, but those aren't the guys remodeling their house anyway. But the, the firefighters and the police and the doctors and the, everyone who's making all this money are the ones that, so they're going to, there's, there's going to be so much, they're going to have so much extra money. It's, it's going to be crazy. And I was thinking about turning down because I, I track my ads. I can turn them down. I can turn them up. And I was really going to turn, because when we got shut down here in California, I thought, oh shit, you know, we shut down. I can't even leave the house. I'm a, you know, why waste money on advertisement? Turn my Google ads down. But the phone didn't stop ringing. The emails didn't stop coming in. And uh, it, it, all that stuff, it, 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 they come to see, I'm, I'm, our company or the company that my brother-in-law just took over for me, it runs itself, but we're in a position to where all the videos that I have online on Google, on, on YouTube, and, and, and now on Facebook is, 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 is we kind of dominate the area. And that's where I keep telling you guys, that's where you need to be dominating the area, your area. And so the phone kept ringing. I said, well, shit, if the phone's going to keep ringing, the ads, gonna, the, the leads are going to keep coming in. I'm not going to turn it down right now, but I watch it consistently. So number two, I want you to track number two, number two, number two. I want you to track all the activity that you're doing. All the activity that you're doing and again this is what i tell you when, if i'm working with you you already know this if i'm your business coach you already know this i want you to track all the activity man what did you at the end of the day i want you to have a sheet of paper with a line drawn down the middle of it and at the top of it on the left hand side it says what did i do today that got me closer to my goals on the right hand side it says what did i do today that took me away from my goals you need to track your activities are they money producing activities what are you doing with your time and a lot of you guys may not be working as much as you're used to it which is fine i'm telling you that's a good thing it's going to be a damn good thing because maybe you were working too much and you were not you were working in your business not on your business and that's going to change right now so i want you to track your activity number three i want you to track your ad spend your marketing uh 
you're going to be able to do a, a, a better targeting and and different ad words and the and, and the way you produce because the, now we're going to be looking at who's getting the money. So your Facebook ads and stuff are going to be showing up in front of RN nurses, uh, firemen, policemen, all that stuff. So, so when you're running ads and and uh, it, it, Jim will be able to tell you this is you're able to put those ads in front of the right people and you're able to write them in the, the way that you're, you're, it gets their attention. So uh, all of that stuff. So, but uh, number three, I want you to track your ad spend, your marketing. You're going to track all of that stuff. You're supposed to be doing this anyway. You're going to take advantage. Oh, this is huge for right now. This is real huge. I want you to write this down. This, put this on pieces of paper, tape it up all over your house, all over your office. I want you to keep your ear to the internet, to the phone, everyone in your industry, see what's going on. The government right now is going to be offering so many stimulus packages, so many things, and I want you to take advantage of every freaking one of them. If uh, if there's a way you don't have to pay lease on on your, uh, your 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 building right now, your space, take advantage of it. I don't care if you need it or not. Take advantage of it. If there's a way you don't have to pay your mortgage for the next three months, take advantage of it. Whatever they're offering. Take advantage of it. Whether you think you need it or not, take advantage of it. Come on, man. Come on. And then uh, right now is going to be a great time. They're going to be doing a lot of small business loans. So if you're in a position to get a small business loan, take advantage of it. Real low interest rates right now. Even if you don't think you need the money, should you get a 1%, 2% interest rate on a small business loan, man, it's going to be great to have that cushion just sitting in your bank. And I'm telling you, when this starts to, the, the, the smoke starts to clear, I, I want you, we're going to be flooding the internet with your advertisement and your Facebook advertisement. We're going to be running ads to hire new people. Uh, and we're going to get the good guys, the guys who aren't working right now because these other dudes weren't on this video watching this and doing what we're talking about doing. Oh man, I need, I need to slow down. Let's just, just, just let's just take a minute. Uh, gentleman's Jack. All right. All right. We got a gentleman's Jack. What else we got? Uh, what does it say? You're you're loud and clear. Thank you, thank you. Josh is there. Josh uh, Crossman just he, he's right in the middle of opening up. I think Josh, correct me on here. I know you're there, but what do you got? Three thousand square feet. I've I've been watching the videos, the floor you're putting in, and uh, again, this is going to be a crazy good time for Josh. Even though right now it seems like they want you to suck it in, and and there's just fear based mentality. You've got to be able to control your thoughts, man. Your mind processes everything. Everything, everything, control what you're thinking about. Stop that news crap, man. Get off of the Facebook unless you're watching me and Jim. Uh, watch the training videos over and over again. But you're going to come out of this thing super strong and more powerful in, th than ever. Mm, uh, take advantage of all the government programs. You got the downtime. And uh, some of you guys are going to have the downtime, some of you aren't. Uh, man, my guys, they're staying busy. Uh, signed up another job for the end of, of this week, had a restaurant guy call me going, hey, got three restaurants that are closed right now, need to get the wood floors refinished. I'm like, yes, you do. <laughs> so uh, so as long as the work is there, work. As long as the work is there, work. But I'm telling you, even before all of this, and, and again, you know, I'm working with you, is work 12 hours a day, work 14 hours a day. I don't care. Come home, have your dinner. You don't get to sit down like the average dude and, and watch the news and watch Netflix. You've got to be on the computer, you got to be writing your manuals, you got to be doing your homework. So with this downtime, number, what number is this? I put numbers to this. Number five is with your downtime, you've got to be education, education, education. You've got to learn. I'm telling you guys, you got to learn how to do your own Google AdWords. I've got the video that walks you through it. It's over an hour long. You can do it. Jim's going to come on here. He's going to talk about the Facebook ads. You learn it. You can do it. And, and Jim teaches the Facebook ads from behind the door. I'm, and uh, which is, and I'm, I'm a fan of both. I'm gonna talk about how you do some Facebook and, and you just do the post, which is pennies on the dollar. And it just keeps you in front of people. It's like an inexpensive uh, billboard, but you've got to do all of it. Uh, but right now, if you have any downtime and before you had to make your own downtime, you didn't get to spend, I mean, you, you got to work two jobs. One job is educating yourself, working on your business. And the other one is running your business. But so right now with the downtime, there is no downtime. I mean, you're, you're doing your education. You're, you're learning how to build your own website. If you don't control your website right now, please send me a message. You need to control your website. I'll show you how to build it, whatever it is. Uh, we'll get it built for you, but you've got to learn how to take control of it. You can't, it's too vital 
all of this stuff, the ads on Google, the ads on Facebook, your marketing, you can't hand that over to someone else. You can hire someone to do it for you, but you've got to know how to do it in case they call in sick, in case they get fired, in case they get the coronavirus. I mean, I don't know, man. You've got to be in control of that stuff. Don't turn it over to someone else. It's too damn important. Uh, so that's number five. Number six, right now, I'm going to take, oh, God, it. I'm going to run over here and, and, and grab my book. I, I should have had it here to show you. But, uh, you know, if, for the hardwood flooring, I've got my book, The Nine Secrets to Refinishing Hardwood Floors. The tips and tricks of the uh, America's favorite hardwood floor guy, me. But, you know, I can send my uh, leads, my future clients, all that stuff. I can send them a link to online uh, and they can flip through the book. I can send them an email with a PDF. Uh, they can, the ebook, they can read it. Or if I'm out and about, I can actually give them the book, uh, which is great. But it makes me the authority. And I tell, if you guys are working with me, you've watched my videos. You know, I keep telling you is you got to have your own book two or three books, whatever it is, whatever trade you're in, you can do that. It's all about giving value, giving value, giving value. So right now with any downtime, I want you working on your book. You gotta be writing your book. That was number what, what was that? That was number five, uh, that was number six. Number seven is I want you to take this time right now to start writing your manual. I've told you guys, life insurance is great. All right, big deal, man, you're in a car accident, you get hit, you're dead. You leave the family $500,000, you leave them a million dollars. I got a wife and two daughters. They will spend that before the burial is over with. And then what? You've got to be able to hand them that manual that shows how to run their business, how to so your business that generates 100,000 a year, 200,000 a year, 300,000 a year. You get sick, something happens to you, you get the coronavirus. <laughs> You're able to hand that manual over to someone and the business runs itself. See, I may leave tomorrow. It may be snowing. I'm going to go to my cabin up in Big Bear. We're going to spend the next couple of days up there enjoying it, getting away from this craziness. All next week, the guys will be working and everything. And all I do is go to the bank, take the money out. And that's what you need to do. You, be able to, you need to be able to take that manual, go to any city, open up your own company. You need to be able to sell that manual as a, as a franchise if you wanted to. So right now with your downtime, everything that I keep teaching you guys and working with you, and you keep saying you don't have time to do it. Now you may have time to do it. And if you don't make time to do it, so this doesn't affect you when it happens again, and it will happen again. So you got to write that manual. You got to right now. You got to be starting working on your hand, your uh, employee manual, your employee training manual, all of that stuff. How does the secretary answer the phone? How does the sales guy answer the sales call? How does the, all of that stuff? All of it. It has to be in writing, and it has to be so specific that a six-year-old could understand it. Are you with me? Someone say yes. You're with me. Type in the comments, Brian. I'm with you. I'm with you. Let me see how I'm with you. Say, I'm so broke right now. I have only, what, what's this dude saying? I'm so broke right now. I only have one way to go and that's up. <laughs> that was Josh. Yeah, man, because you're investing in yourself. You're investing in yourself. But uh, type in the comments, Brian, I'm with you. So uh, slow down a little bit, catch my breath. I'm telling you, I, I, normally I'm sitting down. Tuesdays, we're doing coffee and conversation, but I'm, this has got me fired up, fired up, because I know the opportunity that's here for you guys if you take advantage of it. Oh, man, I'm going to take a break. Jim, are you there? I've got about eight more numbers that I want to do. But uh, and now we're both here. Yep. Well, my name is Jim McMillan. Uh, Jim Yeti uh, is how you know how I'm known. Long story, but uh, I've been in um, the contracting business for probably. <laughs> Eric looks like Brian needs a contractor's contractor to run his lives. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, so I've been in the business for about thirty something years. I've been through a few recessions, a few depressions, or whatever you want to call them. And um, some of the things that, uh, you know, that uh, Brian was talking about and, and some of the things I'm adamant about is, so when there's, when there's a downturn in the market, really what's happening is there's an exchange of wealth. There's a repositioning of wealth, right? And along with that comes opportunity. And what, you know, the, 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 the problem with a lot of that is uh, that, you know, people are sheeple for the most part. You know, like we like to feel safe in most but decisions that are based in fear, fear is to remove, to stop, like stop advertising, stop doing all kinds of stuff, leave, you know, uh, lay off people. 
And what happens is there's these gaps in the market and it doesn't matter if it's contracting or if it's the airlines, it doesn't matter. But what happens is those that are in a better position or that have done more behind the scenes homework tend to make it through. And then those that make it through, just like Brian was talking about, there tends to be a gaping hole in the marketplace because a lot of contractors, unfortunately, um, are going to be wiped out. Uh, and so that's kind of um, a sad reality. And for the most part, it has more to do with what you've decided to do with your time prior to and during the storm. And that's the sad part is, is that um, most people are going to, you know, watch Netflix and chill, right? And the problem with that is, is <laughs> you're in no better position, if not worse, than prior to it happening. Because when there's a really strong economy, the weak even survive, right? Because there's so much work out there that even if the weak contractors, when I say weak, I'm talking about weak in their message to market, weak in their marketing development, weak in their website and, their, and, and, and the way they move a, a customer through the logical steps of purchasing triggers and all of those things. And if, if they're not doing a rising tide lifts all ships, but what happens is, when the storm comes, a lot of them capsize uh, because they don't know how to drive the ship. And so uh, one of the best things that we, I was talking to Brian about this, I said, we're two old war dogs. We've been through a lot. We've been through several uh, downturns together, you know, uh, uh, be, you know, being as old as we are, we're two old farts, I guess. Maybe Brian wouldn't say that, but I definitely think I'm an old fart, 50 years old. But um, one of the best things that you can do is what, it's to give you a little bit of backstory of who I am is... Um, I'm a fourth generation contractor that um, pretty much went broke. I'll really shorten the story up, but I pretty much went broke um, about 15 years ago, lost a massive amount of money. And I had been making quite a bit of money. I, I ended up um, taking the residual money and uh, uh, buying gyms with it. So I, I owned MMA gyms throughout Arizona and uh, mostly um, um uh, jiu-jitsu and, and Muay Thai and stuff like that. But I was really, really getting bigger, you know what I mean? And, and I was making a ton of money in the construction business. And then a few little fatal flaws happened, like a house of cards, and I lost it all. Well, I went on this journey because what I had done was I was paying these Facebook-type gurus, these marketing gurus, to handle my future. I didn't know it at the time. But when you let somebody else handle your website. And when you let somebody else handle your Google and your SEO, and you let people handle your marketing and your lead gen, things like Home Advisor and all this crap, well, you're putting the future, future and the health of your future into the hands of other people. So now you, your wife, and your family are dependent upon other people for lead gen. And that's just a disaster. Believe me, I know I learned the hard way. And so what I ended up doing was, is I had to, I said, if I took all this time and energy and all this money, hundreds of thousands of dollars in marketing, and I'd have just learned how to do this myself instead of watching my generation's Game of Thrones and, you know, and going bass fishing and golfing. If I'd have just took the time to learn how to do this all myself, I might not be in the position that I'm in. And so I set out on this journey about 14, 15 years ago to where I had to learn to do this all myself. Well, within the interim of that first five or six years, I had learned so much and realized how wrong I was and how wrong most of us are in the construction industry about how people arrive at a decision to hire us. Because what does conventional wisdom tell you? Do a good job, get your, you know, get your furrows, and you get, you know, and what'll happen is you just put your time in and master your craft, and you're just gonna end the leads will come. They'll just magically come. And the problem with that is they don't magically come. And so let me ask you guys something. How many of you know a hundred master craftsmen? I know the best people. I, I know people, woodworkers, that could make you cry. They're so good at what they do. I know painters that are so good that they should be using canvases. They should be hanging art, not painting houses. And they're broke. Because the sad reality, conventional wisdom would tell you that if you're really good at what you do, you will make a lot of money and the leads will come. I don't know very many people that adapt that business model that have made it. What happens is I see mediocre painters, mediocre roofers, mediocre deck builders that are making millions of dollars. 
because they learned how to market, how to sell themselves to people in a way that attracts their dream client. And then they ask more money than the average Joe Schmo because they've earned the right to do that. And they get hired out the yin yang. The better marketer you are, life isn't fair. You would imagine in a perfect world, the better you are at painting or roofing or plumbing or something that the world would reward you. When have you, where do you, why do you think that life is fair? Who would have ever told you that? They were lying. Life isn't fair. It isn't the best contractor. It is the best marketer that makes money in contracting. And I can show you case study after case study after case study after case study of how that works. And like Brian talks about work on your business, not in your business. If you make, if you work in your business, you'll make an honest living. And when you retire, you're going to be cutting coupons. You work on your business, you'll retire early and take the kids to Disneyland, right? Seven, and <laughs> take, take this time to start writing your manuals. Number eight, start writing your next now hiring. That's what it is, is you're, because you're going to write this ad on how to hire people. You want to attract the best people. And there's going to be some guys out of work that are great at the trade that you, that you do. So if you don't have my cheat sheet on how to write an ad on how to hire people, send me a message or an email. I'll send that to you. We're going to be giving you guys a lot of free stuff. We just want you guys to take advantage of this whole downturn right now. Uh, and then the number nine is contact everyone you've ever done work for. If you've got contractors that you used to work for, and that's why I say is you need to build up that database. I know e uh, Jim loves for you to have your email list so that you're always sending out the email newsletter. I like a paper newsletter, whether you send it out quarterly or every other month, it's something fun for people to look forward to. Uh, everybody is on my Facebook group with, I got like, I don't know what, 25, 50 people who give me the five-star ratings. I send them, you know, we do a video and stuff, but you, you need that database because you got to stay in front of these guys. You got to be letting them know that you're still in business and everybody wants to see you succeed. If you've done one good job, that person wants you to succeed. If you've done two good jobs, those two people want you to succeed. Take advantage of that. Call them up personally. Say, hey, you know, maybe getting slow right now. Who do you know? Get some leads from those guys. You've got to get in touch with everyone that you know. Well, Facebook, we're going to be talking about only because, especially right now, everybody's on Facebook talking shit to one another about the freaking coronavirus and politics. Um, well, that was number nine. Contact everybody. Number 10 is, I'm telling you, with the Facebook Live, I'm telling you guys, if with, you're using your Facebook, I've, I send you guys these emails all the time. I'm telling you all the time is if you have a business and you're working right now, you need to be doing one. You need to be doing three Facebook Live every day. You show up to the job. It's Facebook High. It's you looking at the camera. You're saying hi to the happy homeowner. That's what I do. Here's what we're going to be doing today. We're starting a new painting job. We're going to be taping off like this. We're going to be sanding like that. Here's what we hope to get done. Blah, 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 blah. Whatever it is. Boom. Lunchtime. Hey, happy homeowner. We've been here for like four hours now. Look how much we've got done. They're going to be amazed at how much you can get done in three to four hours. We're getting ready to take lunch, but I wanted to show you around. Here's what we got done. You've got to stay in front of these guys. End of the day, boom, here's what we got done. Wish we had got this much done. We got more done than we expected. All of that stuff. The more they see you, the more they hear from you, they've made a personal connection with you. I have people call me all the time going, hey, is your daughter still in music? I'm like, who the hell is this? You, 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 what, you, Scott, you, you follow me around, whatever. But we call this on the internet. They, they call me up thinking that they know me. A lot of you guys, we have personal relationships through emails and text messages. We've never met face to face and had a beer, but when we do, we've already known each other because of these videos. It's the same thing with your clients. So you've got three videos a day that you're doing on Facebook Live. I've got three to four videos every project. I the, My guy does them all. I download them. I do a little bit of editing, not much. I put them all together with the, the uh, video testimonial at the end of the job from the client. I'll show you. I can send you some links so you see exactly what I'm talking about. Now I've got a small three-minute, maybe six-minute home makeover movie that I show on Facebook consistently over and over again, and I will boost that. And I'll say, hey, if you have any questions on what we did – in as I'm boosting it, I'll say, if you have any questions on what we did, leave them in the comments. I answer every question. If you want more information, leave them in the comments. Uh, I'll answer them. I said, hey, we have a book. I wrote a book, Nine Secrets to uh, Nine Secrets to Refinishing Hardwood Floors. If you'd like a free copy of that book, leave it in the comments. All of that stuff.
stuff. And I boost that $10, $30. And I'm in front of 3000 people consistently in my neighborhood with, and, and Jim will tell you about the, the, the Facebook stuff, all of that stuff right now, you may not be busy. Say shit, Brian. Now, now you tell me, I've been telling you, okay. I've been telling you. Okay. So you're not working. You're still doing the Facebook live at least one a day. Uh, go out into your garage, show them around, say, talk to them, say, Hey, we're not working right now because the government has this on shutdown. We're staying safe. I don't want to put my guys in harm way. I don't want to put you in harm way, whatever it is, make that connection with them, show them your tools, talk about why you bought the DeWalt instead of the Milwaukee, show them your little hand tools, have how you scrape in the corners or sand stuff or how you black teach them your trade. Say, Hey, you know what? When this, when the smoke clears, there's going to be a lot of guys coming out of the woodwork that say they do this trade. You may not need to hire them. Here's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do on your own. You go to Home Depot, you rent this kind of thing. You do it this way. They're not going to do it. Nobody wants to do that shit. We do it. But but you're giving them the information. They're going to call you because you're the guy showing them. All right. You, so you but you still you're doing at least one Facebook live a day staying in front of people. Uh, that was number. What was that? That was number 10. Number 11. Is I'm, you know, I got a video on my YouTube is never lower your prices, never, never lower your prices. I hate that shit. But right now is a good, you know, fire sales work when a building has a fire, fire sales work because it's a fire. Uh, that bullshit about going out of business, everything 75% off today's world, that kind of shit, that kind of marketing doesn't work. But with this CV, COVD 19 bullshit, Right now, you're able to give a legitimate discount because I'm telling you, there's nothing more important than making $10 a day versus no dollars a day. As the company, as the company, the company still pays you as the employee, the company still pays the employee. So everybody's still making money. The company may not make as much money. So if you've got a discount that you can get, you got to let them know you've got to stay busy. You've got to stay working. You've got to keep your guys working. Is It's... Uh, some of you guys have four or five employees. You've got enough money in the bank. I know you're going to be okay, but what about your employees? If you don't keep those employees busy, I'm going to hire them. And the guys watching this video doing what me and Jim are talking about, they're going to hire them. They're going to steal them away from you because that's what I want you to do. I want you to take advantage of this downturn right now. So you've got to keep these guys working consistently. There's nothing more important than break. Look, man, the main thing, I tell it over and over again, right here in this book, the three reasons to, to start a business, make a profit, service other people. Number two, number three, make a profit. There's nothing more important. Every day you've got to make a profit. Every day you have to be making that profit. I don't care what it is. Two dollars, ten dollars, two hundred, two thousand. Make that profit. Be out there. Be seen. Stay in front of people. My God, man, there's nothing. F oh, man. Ten years ago, 15 years ago, me and Jim would have died to be in front of thousands of people on television or the radio and now we're able to do it for free that's why we're taking advantage of it and you guys are like oh no bullshit you do know we're telling you take wow. advantage of this stuff hey jim go ahead man they can hear you i can't hear you but they can hear you what else? <laughs> so what i was going to tell you is this listen a couple of things that work really well okay like he was talking about but there's some key attributes to doing a case study. And so I want to show you something. There, there's three things you need to know about a case study video. One, two, three. Okay. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to identify or think about the three main questions that you're always being asked. Um, like, well, is it going to, you know, how long is it going to last? Or, or uh, you know, um, can you change the color or like, are, are you going to just go get guys from the Home Depot or you or is, is your guys that work for you? In other words, you know, all these questions that you get asked, right? Well, whatever those top three questions are, I want you to think about them and write them down. And then every case study video is going to answer subconsciously one of these questions. And the reason is when you can answer a question before they ask it, they feel as though you're the expert and the authority in the business. In other words, I don't even have to ask them. He already knows what I'm thinking. Make sense? And so what you're going to do is your overall general theme of the video is this. Like, are you going to trample my bushes? Like, are, like, are my plants safe? Right? Let's just say that's what it is. Can you see that? Are my, are my plants safe? Okay? And then... That's going to be the overall theme of your video. And so you have a before, in other words, like a before, during, and after of your video. Look how beautiful this looks. Look how, look how awesome this looks. The before, 
during and after of the video. But at the very end, you're going to ask, you're going to get a video testimonial. Literally, the video testimonial is the most important part, social proofing, right? And at the end, how do you like the job, Miss McGillicuddy? Oh, it's fabulous. I love it. You're the best thing since sliced bread. Okay. Oh, and what about your plants, ma'am? Oh, you never, my flowers are all looking beautiful. So you get a before, during, after. And the most important part is the video testimonial, right? The video testimonial. But the overarching thing of your video is answering one of the top three concerns. And you do that with all three concerns. And when you start stacking your, and I have a video in my group, Blue Collar Secrets, that goes over optimizing your Facebook page, right? And so what people are doing, there's, it, there's this thing called market sophistication, okay? It's called market sophistication. What I want to talk to you about is this, okay? When you make an ad, okay, we're not in the same era. Like, think about Star Wars when you're, you know, from the 70s. When it came out, it was like, man, this is incredible. I can't believe it. But now you show a kid that, they'll look at it and go, I can do better on my computer because there's market, there's movie sophistication. We can spot green screens and old crappy movies that doesn't, because we're sophisticated, right? We got a trained eye. Well, there is market sophistication with Facebook ads. And so when you make an ad, people know, God damn it. When you make an ad, people know you've got your sponsored link up here, you've got your video, and then you got your call to action down here. What people know is that before I decide to make a commitment and go over and leave Facebook and go over to your website, I'm going to check you out. And they click this and they go to your page. And on that page, you're going to have all these optimized videos. And you take them because what happens is better than YouTube, better than any other place, when they go on your page and they click and they watch the video, unlike Facebook, uh, YouTube, where I go click a video about um an airless packing repair, and the next thing I know, I'm watching two puppy dogs fight over a... In other words, they take you off on these crazy rabbit trails. I'm learning yo-yo tricks, and I don't even like yo-yos, but I'm just staring at the YouTube, and it's just taking me down the stream to somewhere I don't want to go. Facebook pages are different. The next video they see is you. The next video they see is you. So if your Facebook page is loaded with videos, they might you they might go there to watch a pinned post, but then they keep watching. And what you're doing is you're brainwashing them into putting you, not, not brainwashing them in a bad way, but when I'm, you're rinsing out the other contractors and going front of mind when you do stuff like this. So there's very specific ways that I want you to make your case study videos that, that will grab more subconscious attention. You know what I mean? You got something to say? Can you, you can't hear me, can you? I forgot. So anyway, let me, let's communicate this way. Or I'm just going to keep going until he's done. So then the other thing I want you to do is think about this. You can drop a pin, all right? So here's another very magical thing that I want to show you, okay? When you're painting a house and you take your phone, like he's talking about, he's talking about doing a Facebook Live. Well, when you do that, you can also, what I want you to do with that video is, Hey, this is Jimmy, and we're over at Miss McGillicuddy's house on 321 Main Street. And what we're doing is we're fixing this, we're fixing that. Now, here's what you can do. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Try tapping above to edit. Shut up, Siri. So, hey, Jim, just keep going. What you're going to do is you're doing Miss McGillicuddy's house. Yeah, just keep going. Okay, I will. Miss McGillicuddy's house, right? And you can drop a pin and you can tell Facebook, I just want to go within a mile of Miss McGillicuddy's house, right? So you can put an ad on for about 10 bucks a day. And what you can say is, hey, this is Jim. I'm over here at Miss McGillicuddy's house at 123 Main Street. And we're doing the jobs in the area. While we're here, we're giving free estimates or da 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 da. If you have the, a, a problem like Miss McGillicuddy had, now they're watching and they're like, yeah, I know either I know Miss McGillicuddy or yeah, that's uh, Main Street. He's right around the corner, honey, right? And what it does is it localizes you. I cannot tell you the rate of return on these um, ads when they recognize the neighborhood, you're showing them something, and Miss McGillicuddy, that half of them know, is like, oh my God, he's an artist, he's the best thing since sliced bread, I love him, right? When you get that on video, and you're showing them to the neighbors, you cannot believe how powerful that is. 
because they figure people are sheeple, they're herd mentality. We all are, it's just human nature. That's, we can't help it. So when they see somebody in their neighborhood doing a job on a house that was built by the same builder, like, yes, uh, you know, Robeson built my house too, or T.W. Lewis built my house too. Oh, he must know how to fix those houses. And they can visualize it because their house looks like theirs. And when you do this, this is incredible. And it's like $10 a day. I spent over a summer, and I have a case study on Blue Collar Secrets. I have a case study. And I'll send the link or I'll have I'll talk to Brian about it, you know. But I have a case study where I spent $2,000 over the course of a summer and made $200,000 from that one ad. And I just ran it and ran it. Because once I hit an ad that worked, I, I just ran with it. And I, I got, I, I think... I got over 70 jobs and they, they were roughly around 3,000 a piece. I was knocking them out in a day. It was amazing. I was doing incredible. You know, it was like four months uh, worth of work. And the, the, the ad hit and oh, crap, I was going to tell you something about the ad. Oh, that's so the rate of return, I think it was costing me well, like, what would that be? Divide 77, like 30 bucks a job for 3,000. So it was costing me 1% for job acquisition. When you learn to do ads yourself, I can't listen to me. The health and future of your family does not depend on how good you can swing a brush. It hey, Jim, can you hear me? I can hear you. Hey, you're like, uh, I'm a couple of seconds behind you watching on my phone, but like yeah. you were saying with Miss McGillicuddy and you're working in that neighborhood with the, with the ads, that's what these guys, you like, what, face, what these guys don't understand how Facebook really works is, we used to say do that with the door hangers. I'm mm -hmm. working in this area, mm -hmm. you know, uh, normally we do a $150 consultation, but if you, uh, you know, within this week or whatever, since we're at this address with these people, you know, and they come home, they see that and they go, oh well, man, if he's working on Miss McGillicuddy's house, he, you know, if he's good enough for her, he's good enough for me. So yeah. you're able to do that with, with, with Facebook. And it's just, uh, they don't need to be a take. Here's what me and Jim, this is why me and Jim are so, we never even met face to face yet, but why we're so connected at the hip is because we really want contractors not to be taken advantage of by these internet <laughs> wannabe marketers. It kills us both. And uh, he's a jujitsu guy. I'm a stand up jujitsu guy. But we, we want to get all of them in the octagon because <laughs> that's their job is to take advantage of you. Not so much take advantage of you, but you know it, it's their job to make money off of you. The same way our clients are on Facebook their clients are on Facebook and you're one of their clients. But the problem is, is they don't understand the construction business. Running a, con running a business period is, you know, and being self-employed is one of the hardest things you'll ever do. I don't, it, it, we're, we're, we're kind of, we're not right in the head. <laughs> we're not, but to run a construction business is harder than any other business. We have to deal with the employees and the crackheads and the guys showing up drunk or DUIs and then the crazy ass homeowners I can't tell you the number of times I showed up and they've done their own samples. And I'm like, Oh my God, no, you haven't. <laughs> so it's, it's construction is different. And for these guys to run these ads and tell you, they can get you 200 roofing leads in the next two days, give me this amount of money. I'm like, Jesus, no, you can't stop. Stop taking advantage of these guys. And I argue, I spend probably more time arguing with these yeah. marketers because Jim is like myself breaking the, uh, early 90s, mid 90s, he was going to the same sem seminars and, and trainings that I was about marketing because you've got to learn the marketing. Whether you, whether you learn it through us, there's books like on trigger words, on words that trigger the emotions in people and, and that get them to look more and read more. And every line has to get them to read the next line and what pictures and before and after pictures do and the videos and all of that stuff. And Jim will tell you is, is we, we buy from people that we know, like, and trust. We know, like, and trust people who are just like us. You've got to read over and over and over again how to win friends and influence people. You know, put it on your Audible and listen to it over and over again. And, and, and that's what Jim teaches. Same thing I teach. And we're giving all of this for free. Uh, and, yeah. and I think Jim, I don't know if I'm overstepping because I can't hear Jim and he can't stop me right now. But I know he wanted to offer you guys his, his training that he sells for like a thousand dollars for uh, how to do Facebook ads in the back office, not just hit the boost button, but how to do the back office stuff. Right, yeah. Jim? 
Yeah. So, so I was talking to Brian. Yeah. Like, so what Brian was saying is I'm not a marketing guy. Now it's weird. It, it, it's, so apparently that's my superpower. And here's what I mean. As I started learning to do all this stuff myself, what I, I, I just happened to get really, really good at it. And so good. In fact, that the, the marketing crowds that I was in, that I was paying to go to these seminars and stuff, I started uh, like when we break off into teams and stuff and I would show them what I was doing and the, and the effect I was getting that I started getting invited all over the country to actually speak to these high level marketers about um, psychological purchasing triggers and stuff because I, I didn't know anything. I, I have a sixth grade education. I'm like, you guys is idiots. What do you want to hear from me for? And but the thing that I done that apparently a lot of them didn't do is, is I spent a lot of time reading books on psychology and what and what makes people buy things and what and what I learned is, and this is why marketers can't help you. What I learned is, is that what like if I'm trying to sell you an iPhone, right? It's a transaction. This iPhone's 900 bucks. Do you want it? And then I try and convince you about how much better your life will be improved with this, right? But it's a transaction. This water, I have water for a dollar, right? Now think about this. If I have water for a dollar and the guy next door has the same bottle of water for 90 cents, why would you pay me a dollar for this when the guy right next to me is selling it for 90 cents? It's the same bottle of water. It's an inanimate object with no emotional attachment. And so that's what most marketers learn how to do is write copy for a transaction. I have a snicker bar. You have a dollar. Let's make a trade. People aren't buying our roofs. People aren't buying our paint jobs. People are buying us. And if you want me to prove it, I want you to run an ad to people saying ex-convict ex serial rapist trying to start a new life. I will paint your house for half price and see how many people is going to call you. Not many people at all because it isn't about the paint job or the roof job or the plumbing job. It's about you. They are buying and trusting your time to produce a deliverable. So here's the thing. If, if we never speak again or none of you guys ever see me again, let me tell you something. The minute I speak to a contractor and say, what are you at heart? What is your company? What is your business? Right? They'll say, well, I'm a roofer. I'm a painter. No, you are not. That is your deliverable, right? You are a marketer. You are a salesman. And your deliverable is your roof or your paint job or anything else. If you transverse that or if you don't think of yourself as a marketer that owns a business, that is when you start the race to the bottom. You commoditize yourself and then the cheapest bid wins. So you have to be a marketer first, okay? Now, let me tell you something, okay? This is what most people don't get. A lot of people try and hire me to actually do their ads. Like they realize, okay, Jim, you're one of us, you're blue collar. How about I just pay you and have you do it? The problem is this. Like, let me, let me ask you something. If I said to you right now, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to take over your business for you as a favor. And I'm going to drive 50 leads a day to your business. Could you handle that? No. You could not. You might think you can, but if I literally lit up your phone with 50 calls a day, you would probably break down. And the reason is, who of those 50 is worth going and seeing? Are you going to drive all over town? Because right now what most people do is they try, because of the lack of leads they get, they try and sell every one of them. And so you're driving around town giving estimates to everybody, and you do not make money giving estimates. You don't make money collecting. Closing jobs and collecting checks. I literally lit up your phone. Money. Calls a day, you when you out. finish a job and they give you a check. So you cannot be out in the field running like a chicken with your head cut off and make, you realize the quality control loss you're going to get? You realize how many people you're going to piss off when you're not there on the job? You can't do both. So what you have to do is have some sort of a system in place that will treat your customers. So what I mean by that is you have an ad, right? And then when they click that ad, they need to go to a system, a page, like a web page or your Facebook page or whatever. And when they decide to make an appointment, have an automated email sequence and all this stuff in place to where you can, if you cannot scale your business, I can, in other words, when you can handle 20 leads, 
you can filter them and you can tell who's a buyer and who isn't, and then you can scale your business, you will make so much money, you will not believe it. You actually won't be able to believe how much money you can make, right? And the reason is, once you figure this out, and I'm saying all this for a reason, once you figure this out and you know that when you take you know that when you take $20 a day into Facebook and out the other end, you're going to get 500 okay? For every, for every $20 a day you spend on Facebook, you can make $500. And you say, okay, Jim, we've started here, okay? Because I get people that look at me and say, Jim, I believe everything you're saying. I've been following you for months. I'll, I'll spend 1000 bucks a day with you if you want to put on Facebook ads with me. I, I don't care. I'll spend, I'll, it doesn't work. You cannot outspend a broken system right? So when you get to this point and then you're like, okay, I can handle this. I've got my email sequences in place. I'm really starting to speak their language on my web page and my Facebook uh, page is, is all starting to be optimized and I got all the right videos and stuff like that. And I can handle this, right? You say, okay, Jim, I would like to make $1,500 a day. Okay. You want $1,500 a day, then this has to be $60 a day, right? You can throttle how much you're making and dictate by how much you're spending on Facebook, how much you want to make. And Brian will tell you, then you can hit it different. Like you win a war by land, sea and air, right? So you will get Facebook. You can have Google AdWords. You can have Google My Business. There's all kinds of things you can do. Yep. But there needs to be a check with most people need to handle their shit. They're not handling their shit. They're like, I got a paint job today and they'll go do it. And then they'll be happy and then they'll come home and they'll Netflix and chill and you know, you can do that, but you're going to have a huge problem at 62 or three years old when you're an old broken down war hog and you cannot work anymore and you realize you don't have enough in savings because conventional wisdom bullshitted you all the way to retirement, right? You learn this stuff, you'll make millions. You get good at your craft, you'll make a reputation among your peers and you'll be known as the guy when it comes to cabinet refinishing, but you ain't going to have a pot to piss in. I hate to burst your bubble. I hate to say things like this, but it's the truth. Someone needs to slap you and wake you up. Brian's doing a good job of it on his own, but he brought me on here for good reason. We kind of think alike. And hey, Jim, I want, I want to go way back to what you were saying earlier about if you're trying to sell a bottle of water for a dollar and another guy's trying to sell the same bottle of water for 90 cents, who they're going to buy. Yeah. Uh, and I want to bring up Eric since he's over here talking shit. But <laughs> Eric in New York, I mean, this guy is a friggin' You know, he does hardwood flooring, but he's an artist. I mean, I mean, yeah. he's got a lot of shit going on, really. But the pictures that he takes, like he just did some pictures of Brooklyn Bridge and like he does these wedding photos and, and yeah. uh, prom photos and stuff. But and, and he does like the when it comes to refinishing regular hardwood flooring, yeah. you know, he, he's like so above the average guy. Yeah. But unless he markets himself that way and has the videos so when people see it, it's like, oh, shit, you had Eric do that. Oh, my God. You got how'd you get Eric? How'd you get Eric? It's, and and to where Eric, if he's going to hire anybody, I would want him to hire a a, 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 a PM guy, like a, a public relations guy, a PR yeah, guy, guy that, that, yeah. that goes out and, 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 and sells him because. He's not the average dude, you know, busting rocks and stuff. He's yeah. that, high, but it, it, he knows it and I know it. But if the client is on the line and these Walmart guys looking for the lowest price bid, he doesn't need to be anywhere near them, no. nowhere near them. It's, it's, he's never going to try to be, he's not going to be able to, you guys aren't going to be able to convince these dollar discount people why they should be paying top dollar for your quality. And, it, and there's always going to be those kind of people. I'm telling you, the Bible says the, the poor will always be among us. It does not say you have to be one of them. <laughs> it, 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 the best thing you can do for poor people is not be one of them. I mean, I, but you've got to set your, and that's like these videos that Jim's talking about doing, the videos that I'm talking about doing, the way I say write your book, all of that stuff, the way you carry yourself, the way that you talk to people, all of that stuff sets you onto this higher level to where they, ex when, they don't expect you to come out and do a free estimate. They're like, oh shit, I'm surprised I'm even talking to him. That's why I want you. That's why I want you. You're like, oh my God. Like Jim is, I know Jim's talking. And we're I'm, I'm gonna, I, we're going to do this again, but we're going to do it better. <laughs> but um, because I know Jim's saying, it's like his email, like, you know, 
you get into the funnel and he's got the automatic emails and all that stuff. And I've got automatic test messages that I send to people, automatic emails that I forward over to them. They've got to, I make them jump through hoops before they can even get on the phone with me. Exactly. And I really like the phone to be answered, but that's what that whole answering your, how to answer your phone cheat sheet is that I have is the girl answering the phone. She's going to be asking all those questions. She's going to be making, Oh, it, well, no, Jim's way too busy to, to get on the phone with you. Eric's what it's like, I don't know, back here at, at uh, one of 2.7 Kiss FM. There used to be this dude, Rick Dees, and he did yeah, a whole skit. He was like this agent manager, and he was like, I got, a, I got a bigger line. On, I got a bigger name on the other line. I got a bigger name on the other line. And that's what it is with you is like, you're the, you're, you're the Tom Brady. I know a lot of you guys don't want to hear that shit, but of your industry, yeah. you're the guy, man. Here, I, I listen to this dude, and I follow him. And he's he's uh, Dean Sharp. He's the house whisperer. List, look him up, KFI AM640, to where he's the interior designer, he's the decorator, he's the carpenter, but he has made this thing to where he's on the largest AM radio station in the world. And he's uh, a guest uh, on, on all these different shows. He's a guest, but he has his own show on Saturday and Sunday. And all he's doing is giving us free advice to homeowners on the new stuff and how to remodel. And he did this thing last week on, you know, you don't have to have your cabinets at a certain level like the industry tells you. You can have it lower, you can have it higher, and here's why. And and people, man, they're like, that old commercial used to be when E.F. Hutton speaks, yeah. everyone listens. And that's what I want you, that's where I want you to get. And right now with this downturn that we're talking about, you're able to do everything that we're saying you should do <laughs> so that you can take advantage of this stuff. Right, yeah. Jim? Yeah. Go ahead, well, I, absolutely. And so um, just like Eric, yeah, like when he's talking about reading a book, uh, I mean, writing a book, like there is so much. Listen, you need to become what I teach is, is I have a course um, called Small Contractor Big Profits. And what it would it, it, and it's it's not just about the at. Listen, the best way that I can explain it is this. People are like, OK, what should I do first, Jim? He, you know, or, or, or how, you know, I need to do all these things. No. All you need to do is one thing at a time, right? But in a logical order, it's called stacking. And it just makes this big snowball that just keeps getting bigger and bigger until you want to turn it off. But when someone will say, well, what's the most important thing? The only, I can tell you, I've been listening to you, Brian, and qualifying with potential customers on the phone by asking them to send me photos and footage where I can give them a ballpark figure. Yeah. And then if interested, let me read the rest of that. Photos for an estimate with an any deposit. Saves me unnecessary. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I completely agree in one way or another, you know what I mean? To refine it and hone it and get it down to like you're doing is, is it saves you hours and hours and hours of time. But what I was saying was, is in a symphony, what is the most important instrument? Well, the violin at times or the trombone at times or the drums at times or the, right, or the cello at times, but they're all extremely important working in harmony to create a symphony, right? And so there's a ton of things you need to do, right? But they're all simple little things. So don't let any of this overwhelm you. It's not that big of a deal uh, to do it. But what you need to do is become the expert and the authority. And you need to stop calling yourself a floor, uh, a wood flooring guy. Do you understand? You need to become a wood flooring restoration specialist. In other words, you have no one will call you an expert through history. No one has ever called someone an expert until they first called themselves an expert. And I don't care if you're talking contracting, biblical scholar, whatever, <clears throat> and everything in between, mountain bike racer, doesn't matter. Until you call yourself and start referring to yourself as an expert, nobody else is going to do it for you. And one of the things I like about what Brian talks about is I'm in 100% agreement with him, is I don't care if it's an actual book, it can be a booklet, but you need to have something. How impressive would it be? With everyone that goes, to, you go that calls or asks for an estimate. You send them your free ear ebook on the top five things that you need to know about wood flooring restoration or whatever it would be. It sets you apart, and it the the, the more expertise and authority you can start commanding in your niche in your area, the less price is an issue. The less price is relevant. Price becomes very irrelevant. Yeah, nine six like that exactly. That how long would that take you to do? Four hours, five hours, and it it it's massively authoritative. It's unbelievable. Look, that's it. The nine secrets to wood flooring or whatever, exactly. And so 
You don't even have to be good at doing it. All you have to do is write it out and send it to Fiverr. And for 50 bucks, they'll make it look like uh, amazing, right? But what I was talking to him about, just so you guys know, I am, um, what I normally do is I have a group and I give discounts in my group. So in other words, I sell stuff to the to the open market, uh, other contractors. And what I'm doing is, uh, and this is what I was talking to Brian about. And that's kind of the reason I'm on here today is I was talking to him. I was like, dude, we got to help these young guys out because they're, they're scared. There's going to be ripples in the economy. A lot of these guys ain't prepared for this. And so what I, what I do is I sell for, to, uh, so I'm, I'm almost finished with a course um, on really digging deep from a contractor's perspective on ads that really work in contracting and how to separate yourself and to attract. Your if you guys getting value from tonight, leave us, leave it in the comments. Let it show us some love. Yeah. It was uh, like a, yeah, that, but I was able to run over and grab my booklet that I send out or give to people, all that stuff. But years before that is, I think we talked about it was, you know, man, I was a kid and I remember giving a lady a proposal and she took it out of my hand and set it on the counter on top of two other proposals. And I was, I was driving back to the office. I was like, shit, how many more is going to go on top of mine? I was like, I need something. And back then my buddy was, uh, uh, he still is. He, he, he produces ink. He makes ink. Uh, lives out in Las Vegas. But he, uh, so I, I got this uh, presentation folder, and he said, "Hey man, get these presentation folders. I'll print them up for you." Uh, this is like super old, but it was you know way back then. On the back, I had because uh, the whole thing was like uh, Adams Hardwood Flooring, specializing in perfection since 1984. Yeah. So then we kept going, uh, specializing in perfection. What is, you can't do perfection. So shit, I wrote the definition of perfection. Perfection does not exist in the achievement. Perfection can only exist in the effort of the achievement. Always strive to do better than your best. Only then can you achieve perfection. That's 1984. But then, uh, so then I was like, well, shit, now I got this big old thing and one little piece of paper, a proposal. I said, well, that, that looks stupid. So then I was taking, I used to print out before and after pictures. This is where you guys have it so fucking <laughs> yeah. easy right now. You don't even know it. <laughs> so I was printing out before and after pictures, sticking them in this uh, brochure thing. And then you know, your contractor's license and, and your insurance and your workman's comp, that shit is wasted. So I'm printing that out. I'm putting it in this folder to make me look more legitimate. I had a lot of uh, write-ups from... Uh, and I used to ask homeowners if, if they were a lawyer, if they were, you know, someone, if they had a business, write me a testimonial on their uh, their letterhead. So that would work sometime. Yeah. So uh, I would stick that in there. But every now and then, so at the end of the job, I put together, um, and, and all of this stuff you should still be doing. I mean, just because the internet is here, you still need to do this stuff. But we were doing way back when I would give them a work completion client satisfactionary questionnaire. So their name, and then they check off outstanding, and then they'd leave the comments at the bottom. So I ended up with thousands of these and uh, of people. So if, if I was doing work for a policeman, I would fill this thing up with other uh, recommendations from policemen. If yeah. I was doing it for a doctor, it would be filled up with other doctors because they felt like they had a connection with that person, even Absolutely. though they didn't know them. Uh, but it, all of this kind of stuff you've, you've got to do. Hey, Jim, we're going to wrap it up in like five minutes. What's your last words on, on saying to these guys? Well, what I was going to say is rather than charge, I, I, I just, in order to give back, uh, what I'm going to do is, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have it in here. I'll give it to Brian. And it's also going to be, um, I'll have a link in my group too, but uh, I'll give it to Brian is I'm going to give you guys the, the entire system, the, the, the entire course for zip, just for, for all of Brian's uh, guys in here. Um, and in my group. So I'm going to just give it away to you guys because uh, I just spending money right now might not be in your best interest. And so rather than, you know, be a dick about it, excuse my language, but in other words, or wait, you know, I'm just going to give it to you guys for free. So I should be finished with that over the next couple of two, three days, four days, something like that. And as soon as I'm finished, you can go over, it'll say nine, $97 something. I'll either have a code or I'll, or I'll go in and fix it or whatever, but I'll get it to you guys so you can have it for free. And it's just a, a real in-depth course on everything to do with Facebook ads, how to write them, what to put, the creative video versus um, you know pictures and all that stuff and what's worked for me. I'll put my case study in there of my personal uh, ad that made me 200 grand in like five months, that kind of stuff. And so I'll give it that you get that guys that for completely free. 
Um, just as kind of me and Brian's way of saying, you know what, you guys are contractors. We're here for you. I know Brian does an excellent job and, you know, in guiding you guys and giving you gold. And uh, I do the same in mine. And uh, it's definitely something that you'll uh, use as a resource. And plus, the reason I want to give it away now is because get your head out of the news and all this negative shit, the scary stuff, and that the world's coming to an end. It isn't. And I'd rather you spend your time learning how to slingshot back and take advantage of the market once it starts back up than to just be sitting watching Netflix wondering what the hell's going on in the world outside. Get your head out of that and start learning. Hey, one, one of the guys was asking... What's your group link? It's it's blue collar worker, right? Blue collar secrets. Yeah, type type that in or something. Uh, so we, I don't think I can type in anything. Uh, I, and the I same thing like him saying is, man, if uh, you know, shit, if you already bought this book, you know, good for you, man. God bless you. If you didn't, if you just like Jim is, if you need a copy of this book, I can give you the uh, ebook and the audio book for free right now. I just want you guys to. Man, for the next couple of weeks, the next month, I don't. I really don't know what the government's going to keep doing. Shit, I don't know. Maybe they will do martial law and not let us out of the house. But at least you'll have this to you know, online, download it, whatever, uh, for free. Just send me a notice. Say, hey, Brian, yeah, send me that book, and you'll be able to go through this thing, uh, the ebook and the audio book. What I else, AJ? What I'm going to do also is my group coaching is normally 197 a month, and it's normally they have to do three months. They have to be locked in. But right now, just $49. They can quit whenever they want just to, I'm going to be, usually it's like we're, we're together once a week and I'm doing emails, but I'm going to start trying to do like twice a week just to, cause I'd, I'd rather they be online with you and I versus yeah. listening to freaking CNN and, and, and all the other bullshit. Yeah. Uh, so any of you guys that want to you know take advantage and, and I'll send out a link and, and, and We'll, we'll both share our links for this stuff, but you can do the whole group coaching where you get to do this stuff, work on your book, work on these handouts, work on all of that crap uh, and just take advantage of all of it. So uh, with that, I mean, we're going to, I guess, wrap it up. I'm going to go yep. make, make another drink. Uh, Jim's waving by. <laughs> all right, guys. Hey, Jim, maybe if I didn't have this, I could have figured out this the whole volume bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I stick in water. <laughs> and leave us up. Whether you're watching the replay or whatever, share this video. I mean, this, I think what we've done tonight is more valuable than anything I've seen on the internet in a long time for, for small con contractors. You yeah. agree, Jim? Yeah. yeah the, the, the thing that bothers me more than anything is, it, it, this is what aggravates me. It's, it's my pet peeve is you get these guys, hey, Get in the standard of right, Ferrari. Hey, if you, I got a Rolex on and I can get you lots of lead. And there's also people, these marketing gurus that know shit about our business. And they literally, even if they mean well, they cannot help you. I have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. I've been on TV commercials, billboard. I've done it all. I've hired everyone you can possibly imagine. And half of them meant well, but they don't understand. We do not sell a product or a service. Believe it or not, we don't, it, we, we provide that, but we do not sell that to the market. We're selling this. We're selling this. It's us. They're buying us. So your know, your like, and your trust factor, your authority and your expertise are what gets you money, not how good you can install a floor. And so they can't understand that. And the other guys that really annoy me is there are guys that actually act like contractors. They wear contractors' outfits. They take pictures by pickup trucks, and they've never been a contractor. I just outed two of them. So my enemy is conventional wisdom and fake contractors I, or fake gurus. I call them furus. They're fake gurus that act like they're in the construction industry to try and get you to use them for your leads, Jen, and they have never been a contractor, and it's uh, so annoying. Brian, myself, there's a few good guys out here that know what we're talking about because we're in the trenches with you. This is where it comes from. I can't even hear him, and I agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> so because I know that like, Jim's, Jim's got the same heart that I got, and we grew up in this industry. Jim's just like me. I quit school at 16, didn't have any – working at McDonald's, a buddy of mine said, you got to learn a trade so you can support yourself. Yeah. Fell in love with construction. That's all I've done. I was uneducated enough to know that I needed – education. So when the guy told me, you've got to learn business, I listened to him. When he told me, you got to read these books, and I didn't read, I didn't know how to read. So I bought the cassette tapes 
when he said, you need to go to these seminars and these trainings, I went to those things. I made it. A, and it's just, I've never stopped. I've never stopped. I mean, you go to my Audible right now, all you'll see is books on marketing, sales, uh, personal development, all of it. When I sold my first company in 2000, in 2001, wrote my, uh, had back then I had already wrote a couple of books. I had wrote Accidental Marketing. I had wrote uh, caffeine for the mind, thoughts that wake you up, make you think. I had wrote customer or client, how'd you treat your last sale? And I put together my mental martial art, uh, defend yourself against your toughest opponent, you. And I had already had 21 day mental diet. Uh, so I had all of that stuff. I sold everything and I went on the road and just did nothing but personal development seminars. But my heart has always been construction because I got into this in 83 and we were being taken advantage of by the homeowners and it hasn't changed. The only way it changed, nothing in your life gets better until you get better. Until you, until you hold yourself to a higher standard, the homeowner is not going to hold you to a higher, higher standard. And not every homeowner, I'm telling you that. There's going to be these dollar and Walmart dollar store people, these Walmart store people. But when you hold yourself to a higher standard, you're going to attract those type of clients. And you're going to attract those type of employees. Man, so... With that, I'm going to say, like I said, if you want the book, the ebook and the audio book, let me know. I'll, I'll email it to you somehow. Uh, Jim's going to give you the links. I'm going to give you the links. Share this replay broadcast with people, uh, contractors. Man, they need to hear this content because we don't want them to get taken advantage of these freaking online website developers and these online marketers and bullshitters. They're all full of they're all full of shit. <laughs> and oh, they did. You don't need to give them thousands of dollars. You need to put that money back into your business. I did this whole thing, Jim, on pay yourself less, earn more. Because contractors, I didn't know. I was like everybody else. If I made a thousand dollars, I was spending a thousand and ten. Yeah. I was, you know, I was buying the toys, I was buying this and that. And you need to read books like uh Profit First. Uh and I wish Profit First had gave more credit to the book of uh, The Richest Man in Babylon, which is pay yourself first. But uh, all of that stuff is the business should be paying you. The business keeps collecting money and you pay yourself as an employee. Sometimes you got to take a, a, a cut in pay so that the business the business can grow. All of that stuff. Jim, yeah. give me a thumbs up when you're finished. Say one last thing. That's it. Uh, yeah, it was nice. Right. We ought to do this more often, you know what I mean? And, and uh, uh, you know, pick a topic and do it and just, you know, give as much information as we can because, um, you know, th th these guys just need a little guidance. And, and, and if we can share any value and keep them from making the same mistakes, it's, you know, it's worth my time to try and help my fellow brothers. I don't know anything about the hospital world. I don't know anything about the, you know, the, 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 the you know, food industry or catering. I don't, that's not my world, but these people inside of the blue collar industry, these are my brothers and sisters and that's who I can help. I can't change the world, but I can change the people that are in my little world and, and offer them advice and help in any way that I can to keep them from making the same mistakes because we all prosper. We need to bring, you know, the, the trades back to where they need to be. And, and that's my whole goal is to try and help as many people as I can and change conventional wisdom. I want to destroy what people are thinking right now because it's putting them into bad poverty mindsets and it's it's insane and i'm just out to do my part to to, to get rid of that hey uh, we haven't talked about it but we've kind of talked about it we haven't talked about it but what i'm hoping is in the future me and jim are going to go from la to dallas to jersey chicago florida whatever as many of these cities as we can and kind of pair up and just do some all-day training for contractors bring them in and we're just going to just make take some massive action yeah. to where it'll be kind of like this but it'll be all day long right jim yeah. yeah i have a i have a i'm doing a few i'm going to be doing one up in um uh well let's see what happens but yeah i had planned on doing two this year we do i do a a two-day workshop so like a friday saturday and when you leave you have a completely new business model and blueprint to start following yeah. and within a couple of weeks you should have like one of my guys implemented um and made within two months of implementing the blueprint we come up with he's named scott miller text painting he made eighty thousand bucks in like two months it's like boom it, but you guys have like if you got like a great city with great fishing that you can take us out on that's you you probably be at the top of the list yeah <laughs> <laughs> We need to get up to Alaska and do some of this stuff, Jim. Yeah. I need to catch some of those big fish that I see. I see these guys posting. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, All right.
I think that's it. I'm going to hit the end broadcast. Uh, you'll see the rebroadcast, and it'll be on the YouTube. I'll send a link to Jim. He'll have it to his guys. Any of these questions that you leave later on, we're going to answer. Uh, man, we just it's been a pleasure sharing the night with you. Uh, and, uh, man, stay safe. I mean, you know, like I don't want to have the politics in it, but this uh, nobody wants to get sick. Nobody wants to die. Uh, you know, so I, don't, I don't want to get into all of that. But at the, at the end of the day, we need to work to support our families. Yeah. All right. Hey, Jim, thanks for coming on and sharing time with us, buddy. All right. All right. Good night, guys.